Hello and welcome back to Level Up Rugby. Today we're going to be rounding off and finishing phase one of our goal kicking by taking a look at the final important piece of equipment, your boots. If specific boot reviews are something that you're interested in, please let me know down below in the comments as I used to be and still really am a massive boot nerd. Absolutely love everything to do with my boots. So if that's something you're interested in, please let me know what boots you want me to review and take a look at. But in the meantime, someone that I do highly recommend is Josh over at Soccer Reviews For You or sr4u.com on YouTube. I'll leave his Instagram links down below in the comments. He's my go-to source and has been for a very long time now. However, in today's video, rather than getting into those nitty gritty micro details of each and every specific boot, we're going to be looking at what, in my opinion, is the primary differentiating factor of boots that specifically affects your goal kicking. The preferred lacing systems of the boot. Other than the new laceless boots from Adidas, there are two main lacing systems that boot manufacturers use. Straight lacing or asymmetrical lacing. Now which type is best all comes down to how you answer this follow-up question. On which part of your foot are you making contact with the ball? Now this is a particularly subjective question, so don't take my answer to be the only truth, because there is definitely more than one way to kick the ball well, but the two most common answers are either the knuckle of your foot, i.e. the instep of your boot, or the top of your foot, i.e. your laces. Let's first take a look at people's reasoning for the knuckle of your foot being the best place to strike the ball. The main trail of thought behind this answer leads to the importance of a solid foot at the point of contact with the ball. Now we did briefly cover how to achieve a solid foot in T height and also the importance of a solid foot in achieving a sweet strike in a sweet strike. So go and check those videos out. And we will also be covering it again in a lot more detail when we reach phase three, when we're looking specifically at your strike on the ball. But essentially the logic is that the harder your foot is at the point of contact with the ball, the sweeter and stronger your strike will be. So following that along, to make a sweet strike with a solid foot, it would make sense and be smart to use the hardest part of your foot, which many believe to be the knuckle of your foot. So therefore the sweetest strike is made when you make contact with the ball with the instep of your boot, i.e. the knuckle of your foot. Well, this is the bandwagon that most rugby boot manufacturers have jumped on with their asymmetrically laced boots. And I can see why it does make sense. They have designed a boot that really increases the size of the surface area of the place you are trying to kick with, the hard instep of the side of your foot. It makes sense. However, and I can only speak for myself here because I haven't really done that much research into other people's feet, but to me it also makes sense that the top of my foot is still pretty hard, if not just as hard as the instep and knuckle of my foot. But the big difference though is that when kicking with the top of my foot, a solid foot and a sweet strike are not the only benefits. A sweet strike is one of, if not the most important aspects of your process. Hence why we have already began to cover it in so much detail in phase one. But it is almost irrelevant if you have no power or foot speed into the ball. You can make the sweetest strike in the world, but if your foot is moving at one mile an hour, the ball isn't gonna go very far. Yes, if you make a sweeter strike, you won't need to hit the ball as hard for it to go as far because you'll be utilizing the full potential energy of the ball, but we are talking about the optimal technique to acquire the most distance from your goal kicking. So if you can combine a sweet strike with increased foot speed, the ball is going to travel a lot further. So then, this arises a second question. How do we generate the most foot speed 
whilst maintaining a solid foot and a sweet strike. Well, let me ask you another question again. When sat on a leg extension machine in the gym, in what direction are your feet pointing? Hopefully your answer is straight ahead because when you move in this straight forward direction, you'll be using the entirety of your quad in the most efficient, effective and powerful way, exerting the most force utilizing the full strength potential of your leg. So to take this knowledge back to the debate of which part of your foot is best to strike the ball with, knowing that the way to exert the most power, force and speed from your quad is to utilize the entirety of it in a straight line with your foot facing forwards, why would you then want to turn your leg out and open it up to strike with the instep of your foot and only utilize the inner portion of your quad. When you're sat on a leg extension machine, you don't point your toes out to the side to expose the instep of your foot and use your inner quad. You keep everything straight, having your foot flexed forward out in front of you, the same as your quad, to exert the most possible force. Although you may believe that the knuckle of your foot is a lot harder than the top of your foot, I don't believe that this supposed increased hardness will bring about more distance from a sweeter strike than using the equally as hard top of your foot. However, you will have added benefit with regard to distance from using the entirety of your quad as opposed to just a fraction of the inside of it. So to have this supposed added benefit of a supposed harder foot at the point of contact, you're willing to sacrifice all of that power and foot speed. Because to open up and strike with the instep of your boot, you have to roll your leg out and thus use only the fractional strength of your inner quad as opposed to the entirety of the front of it. On the other hand, in my experience and in my opinion, the top of my foot is still just as hard as the knuckle of my foot. So as long as I remain in this plantar flex strike foot position with the help of a higher kicking tee, my foot will be just as hard. But this time, I will have a lot more power and foot speed because I will be using the superior strength of the front and whole of my quad as opposed to just the inner proportion of it. I'll be maximizing the full potential energy of both the ball and my kicking leg. So to bring all of this information back to the initial question of selecting the best style of lacing, in my opinion, in short, the answer is straight laced boots. Firstly, like we said, the top of my foot is still just as hard as the knuckle of my foot. So therefore there is no real added benefit with regards to the sweetness of my strike from kicking with the instep of my foot. So that completely removes the only once thought supposed benefit and advantage of opening up and side footing the ball with the instep of my foot. But then secondly, there is a real advantage of me rolling my foot over and kicking with the entirety of my quad, not just the inner portion of it. This allows me to generate the most force, power and foot speed into the ball, thus combining a hard foot with a powerful swing. So not only do you have a solid hard foot at the point of contact with the ball in that plantar flex strike foot position with the top of your foot, but you will also be using and maximizing the potential strength of your kicking leg. You're utilizing both energy sources very well. The ball and your kicking leg are getting maximized. So for these two reasons, personally, I now only use straight laced boots. This is because 
as I try to hit the ball with the top of my asymmetrically laced boots, I'm connecting with where the laces meet the leather. This leads to the ball skewing off of my foot and it is not as smooth of a strike and connection and more or less defeats the entire purpose of this bigger strike surface area at all because I'm not actually trying to use it. On the other hand, with straight laced boots, you don't have this skewing, uncomfortable contact issue because you are connecting with your laces. But then you even get the best of both worlds because say, even after watching this video, you still want to side foot the ball and kick the ball with the instep and the knuckle of your foot. You can still do that with a clean surface area with straight lace boots. It may not be as big, but you still get a smooth surface. You truly get the best of both worlds because you can use your laces and you can use the instep. Whereas with asymmetrically laced boots, you can only use the instep of your foot. The reason for the innovation of asymmetrically laced boots is to open up the sweet spot of the knuckle of your foot to aid in achieving a sweeter strike. And you can't argue that they haven't done this, but in my opinion, it is almost completely irrelevant because the top of my foot is just as hard and is just as much of a sweet spot to be aiming for. So the hardness of your foot and the sweetness of your strike will be more or less the same regardless of whether you're kicking with the instep or the top of your foot. However, by turning your foot out, you are sacrificing the full potential power of your kicking leg. Only using a fraction of it, you'll be striking the ball just as sweet, but it will be a lot weaker when using only your inner quad. Like we said, it's all well and good having the sweetest possible strike but if your foot isn't moving in the fastest, most powerful way, how sweet your strike is, is somewhat irrelevant. So to conclude, the optimal way to strike the ball is to roll your foot over and utilize the maximum potential strength of the entirety of your quad. Striking the ball with the hard surface area of the top of your foot, in that plantar flex strike foot position and straight laced boots provide the best surface to perform this. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time for the playbook.